Today on 14 Victor Echo, we have an airplane engine, but where's the airplane? Let's talk about that. And guess what we did? I went shopping this week. We bought something. I approved the shopping. That you did? Because it's for airplanes. Well, one in particular. Welcome to 14 Victor Echo. So, how much money did you spend? Uh, I'm running out of fingers. Uh, we committed to, I think it was $52,000 for a new engine and $9,200 for a new propeller. Okay, so that's a little bit more than um, we talked about. You know, I said if you're going to spend anything over a thousand, you need to call me and talk to me first. Oh, did you not get the email? Actually, I did get the email. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, we uh, went ahead and bit the bullet. It's kind of weird uh, buying an engine for a plane that we're going to build build when we don't even have the first part of the plane to start building. <laughs> uh, our previous video, we were talking about the debate of Lycoming is raising the prices on their engines. By the time you watch this, oh, heck, by the time we've recorded this, prices have gone up 15% on Lycoming engines. So to save some money, we're taking a little bit of a gamble that uh, buying the engine now makes sense. Um, still, the old time estimate that we got before the craziness of engine orders came in was Lycoming was taken up to one year to produce and deliver a Thunderbolt engine. We waited until the very, very last day to put in our order in yep. hopes that we could be towards the end of the list. And I emailed Vans, um, and it was kind of a comical joke, because I even said, I'm sure I'm the first person to ask this, but please feel free to put us at the end of the line. To which they responded, you and everyone's grandmother is asking to be at the end of the line, but I'll put it on the notes for the order. So we'll see where we end up in line here, but hopefully they revert to the order the um, orders were received in. So, fingers crossed, year and a half, maybe two years to get our engine, we'll take that. Um, we still get the two year warranty after it ships. Mm -hmm. So, short story is we have three years to build this airplane that hasn't arrived yet. But we did make a commitment to ourselves that if for some reason we've slowed down significantly or are not meeting our <laughs> timelines, we're planners, that we bring in help. That we meet this deadline, get that engine on, and get yes. rolling. And so There's some great resources in the local area. We are talking to some Vans aircraft builders down in Lockhart this weekend. Yeah, I was talking to this man, um, hanging out at the hangar. Yep. I was hanging out at the airport. So I walked over and I was like, I see you got some RVs in here. And he's like, yeah. And I'm like, which ones are you building now? He's like, well, I built 16 already. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, all right, you want to make it 17? <laughs> and Kit's coming in next month. <laughs> we fully intend to do every rivet that is called for by the plans and hopefully invite friends over to help us out and stay on track. But if we do fall behind, there are paths that we can go to get this plane flying within <clears throat> our three year timeline. Yeah. So um, the current status is our fuselage kit. Kit number two shows up first, uh, hopefully in about a month. Or less. I wouldn't count on the less too much, but the estimated creating date is April 4th through the 15th and then after it's crated, it's got to be shipped via freight to us. So if it's the 14th, we're not seeing it until the last week of April. But we did get another email, got an email about our tail kit. Our tail kit will, will be crated uh, 1st of May. Mm -hmm. So our first kit will show up second. 
The real question is, do we look at our fuselage kit and not touch it? And That is going to be hard. So some advice that I have received, uh, actually as a comment on uh, one of our previous YouTube videos, is Vans is really good at providing more detailed instructions in the tail kit because it's your first kit and you're learning. And the second kit is kind of assuming you've learned that so the instructions are a little bit thinner. So there's an advantage to starting on the first kit. N knowing us, we're going to get started. Yeah, I think we know enough people in the area who built vans or er, RVs around that if we get stuck, we can call them up and be like, hey, yeah. what is this trying to say in the instructions right here? Yeah. And it really also depends on what is the time difference in us getting that uh, tail kit. That tail kit's coming like a week later. Of course, we're going to just start on the tail kit. Right. Maybe we inventory and start getting some things ready to be primed in the fuselage kit, and then we set it aside uh, and then get started on the tail kit. Either way, once the first piece shows up, I think it's time to get to get in and start working. Yeah, I'm ready to start building. So engine is ordered. We went with the IO390 uh, EXP. So we're going to get the 215 horsepower with the uh, electronic uh, ignition. We're going with the Lycoming um, ignition system, and I think it's the airflow um, fuel system. I have to go check our order. Honestly, I'm going to be 100% honest. I think some of the selections that we made were just to get the order in, and I'm planning on being able to talk to Lycoming uh, once our order is a little closer to start in and possibly tweaking the order based upon feedback. Um, from, I haven't confirmed this myself, but I have heard direct from Lycoming and from other YouTube creators about how interactive Lycoming is when they're working on your engine and how they want to customize it and get it right for you, especially in the Thunderbolt uh, non-certified world. Um, they're fantastic, and I'm really looking forward to that. I don't want to call them today because I think they're kind of busy. A little bit. A little bit busy with this <laughs> influx of orders, but um, I plan on, well before they actually start on our engine, talking through it uh, a little bit more. Now, we did lock ourselves into the aluminum prop. We uh, did. Decided to go aluminum. Uh, I keep reading the research about how much better composite props are. Um, I know aluminum. I'm just more comfortable with it. It's probably one of the easier things to change out later if we really, really want to. But I... I mean, it, it's only $16,000. Yeah, it's, it's quite a bit. You know, it's what, $7,000 more? Yeah. Seven, seven yeah. to seventy five hundred. It's almost a whole nother prop. I, I don't know. Maybe I'm gonna regret choosing this one spot to go cheap. But um, I also think that the aluminum prop built by Hartzell is um, a well known proven technology. So I don't think we're taking a step backwards. I met all the guys at Hartzell. They're real nice. Yep. And it is a Hartzell composite prop. If oh. we go composite, it's still Hartzell. I guess I'm going to have to talk to them at Osh this year. Yeah, and, you know, I suspect the prop is going to come well before the engine, so, you know, playing the game of let's wait a year, maybe change it is not really going to happen. So <clears throat> if we end up with a prop sitting here, we might sell it and buy the composite one if we decide to change later. <laughs> but it's time to get to, get to building, and um, we bought an engine. We bought an engine. We bought and an a engine prop. and a prop, and still don't have a piece of metal that looks like an airplane yet, but it's coming soon. Um, it, by all indications, Vans is really ramping up production and starting to ship things. So if you've been waiting for a while, like we have, uh, the, the wait's pretty much over. Yeah, they're coming. So they say they are. So they say.